led a wonder uh, uh, Dear colleagues from UIL, uh, uh, fellow scholars, it is a great privilege for me to present my presentation today. Uh, my, the talk of my study is on married uh, uh, women uh, education in Afghanistan. Uh, um, as you know, that uh, I would shortly introduce this issue. In Afghanistan, when you get uh, when, when uh, a girl uh, get married, uh, she should terminate from school. And the reason behind is that if a single woman uh, sit with um, a, a married girl, a woman, uh, uh, there will be some sort of negative effects on the moral of them. So this theory has uh, roots in, in culture, in religious understanding and interpretation. So um, uh, I will start from the uh, contextual information. Uh, Afghanistan has 32 million uh, population. 51% uh, of them are male, 48% uh, uh, female. Uh, we are among the youngest uh, nations, uh, which has a high percentage of the youth uh, population. Uh, so, uh, indeed, right to education uh, uh, is, uh, we are in our constitution, is pursuing his, uh, international human rights declaration, which says everyone has the right to education. Constitution of Afghanistan has very clear, guaranteed uh, term for education, uh, which says that every uh, Afghan has the right to education. And education law says that intermediate basic education is uh, compulsory. So uh, it means that we have a very uh, concrete legal base for right to education. My study is basically focused on right to education. Still, this is uh, some sort of thing that we should uh, uh, discuss. Uh, regarding the numbers, 31% uh, literacy rate is 31% 30, uh, in Afghanistan. Female rate is 17%. Uh, 8 million children in school, and uh, which uh, 39 million <coughs> are girls. 3.7 million schools age of uh, 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 girl school age are out of school. Uh, so uh, still uh, there are a huge gap. It means that there is right to education and the numbers uh, shows a very uh, huge gap between the responsibility and practice. 50% of Afghan girls are married or engaged by the age of 15. 40% uh, of, of Afghan girls attend elementary school. Uh, 1 in 20 girls attend school behind 6th grade. Uh, Afghanistan has 1.5 million videos, one of the highest uh, proportion in the world. And the average uh, of Afghan videos is 35 and uh, uh, year of age and 94% uh, of them are illiterate. And most of them have more than four, four children. So uh, our problem is uh, uh, strongly related to these numbers, which is married girls, which is uh, girls that they are going to, uh, to be in, in, in secondary education, but they are supposing to become married. And the third is the widows, that they have uh, right to education, but the system, the policy didn't allow them to get the education. Uh, uh, the basic thing that uh, which is in this presentation is that the problem uh, MLE policy doesn't allow women who get married uh, while they are in school to continue, to continue their education in MLE schools. Uh, uh, the general education policy uh, examination and registration uh, uh, aspect says that in the 46th term uh, that uh, uh, when a girl becomes married she should terminate from school. So uh, what, what, what is the available options for, for the their education. Two available options are provided today. First, to attend night schools, and second, to literacy centers. <coughs> night schools in Afghanistan is not applicable because of the cultural restraints. Uh, we are, uh, there are these huge culture barriers. Uh, no one is allowed to uh, go to night schools, especially female. And most of them are, uh, uh, they are uh, not a specific school, night school for, 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 for female. They are uh, male and female should study together. And in provinces, uh, uh, most of night school are at the center of provinces. Uh, it means that it is not extended to villages, to far villages, or to districts. So if, uh, if a married woman wants to get education she, in a far village, she should come to the center of the province, and then uh, she should attend the school during nights. And uh, the second option is literacy centers. Uh, uh, the first problem is that 
uh, the electricity center is, uh, is to third grade and then and somehow it is uh, to sixth grade. Um, uh, it is not widespread. Uh, the latest data that I have from the literacy department, it said that 25 uh, provinces among 34 has literacy centers, while, while there are still missing. Uh, we have 365 districts, and, uh, and these 365 uh, districts, or about 200 districts, have uh, limited uh, literacy centers. So uh, you see that you know, from one side there is right to education, that the government is responsible to deliver education services to the people, and to other side there are numbers that explicitly illustrate that government is not performing their, uh, their task uh, uh, appropriately. Uh, the reason can be that 50% uh, of off on girl cannot study. So with, with, with having such policies, uh, extracting policy, uh, you cannot uh, See that uh, they will go to school because options are blocked for them and the available options are not applicable for them. And the second is that 1.8 million girls are at the risk of dropout. I, I told uh, that 50% uh, of Afghan uh, girls are, are becoming married at the age of 15. So it means that if uh, this policy is still in practice, uh, automatically that uh, the uh, 1.5 million girls that they are in the school, they will drop out. Among them, 1.8 million will be drop out. They are at the, at the risk of drop out. And uh, 1.5 million people cannot study uh, because the option is not appropriate for them. So uh, this is the problem that we defined. And uh, our strategy to confront this problem and to go ahead is that first we should have a case study. Uh, studying on this problem to gather information and to present it to the policymaker. Uh, the second will be dissemination of information because still this problem is not highly recognized in the country. When we talk with the decision maker, they said that yes, this is a problem, but when we provide them the data and information, they said, well, this is a big problem and we never recognize this problem. Uh, so still there is very low information about this specific problem. And the third would be an advocacy that could uh, push up uh, policymaker to take decision. Uh, the purpose of this study is uh, three things. It's very clear. The first is define the problem. Uh, I need to get more, uh, I got more data information to, to define this and to present it that this is a real uh, social and, and national problem in Afghanistan. The second is uh, elaboration of solution through a case study. I put one case study of Ada One Summer Education Accelerated Education Program, which is already presenting uh, services to these girls and these married women. And uh, solutions should be uh, should be defined for them. And uh, the third is provide recommendation to policymakers. Uh, uh, the methodology was consists in three points. One is that I, I conducted some interviews with the uh, married women before I, I, I joined the uh, EOL. The second was the literature review. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, I didn't find any, any specific resources in this specific case. Uh, I, 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 I studied, I explored Islamic countries. Uh, such practices never have happened there uh, or never existed in that country. In Afghanistan, uh, I looked behind the policies, behind the studies and other things. I couldn't find any specific study or or, 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 or information that could really touch this case, so uh, or acquired uh, uh, some sort of uh, clarification to my study. Uh, there, there were some, uh, uh, there were some uh, implicit resources like you see that uh, the rule of marriage and education, or and somehow culture barriers in education, but not really. Uh, uh, direct resources that would help me to, uh, to elaborate my study. So the third one is Ada One Summer Education uh, Accelerated Education Program. It was indeed uh, one, one of the main points that I could, I, that I studied this program and uh, I got information uh, and analyzed it and put it into uh, a structure that would really help me to, uh, to, to, uh, to find the solutions. Uh, in, in, in interviews, uh, I interviewed with about 200 uh, uh, married women. Uh, other sections, I, I didn't bring it because
because due to the distraction of time. But three uh, main point finding I, I got from the interviews. First is that uh, on field culture and lack of schools are the basic barriers for their education. The second is that the dissemination of appropriate information can change family mindset toward girls' education. Uh, I talked with the family member, they saying that, uh, that they have very little information about education. But my study find this that uh, if we provide them appropriate information, they can see that they can change their mindset regarding girls' education. Uh, and the good point is that uh, all the respondents illustrated that they are willing to get education. So it means that if two operations become next one is to provide appropriate information for the community, for the families, and the second is to uh, provide their schools. Uh, uh, definitely the respondents are willing to get education. Still there is a strong will among, among them to, uh, to go toward education. Uh, the, case, I will, uh, the, the second point is regarding the case study uh, um, of Ada One Sound for Education. Ada One Sound for Education is an NGO which is working in the one since 2001. Uh, the NGO designed a program, Accelerated Education Program, the only program in, in, in a one sound education system that is providing accelerated education to this category of people, of people uh, they can easily come 